Hello, people of the internet. My name is Johnny, and welcome back to another review video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new graphic novel version of The Silver Eyes. I've seen in the Reddit for the past couple of days that people have a little bit of a mixed opinion about this book, but honestly, in my personal opinion, I really don't think it's that bad, and I'll get into my opinions uh, a lot more later in the video, but for right now, let me introduce the book. So all the way back in, I believe, 2015, around the time of FNAF 4, Scott released this, which is the Five Nights at Freddy's The Silver Eyes. This is the first off the original cover, which I love absolutely a lot. I definitely prefer it over the new one, which is why I'm so happy to have the original cover. Um, and it was the first book in the trilogy, the trilogy being The Silver Eyes, The Twisted Ones, and The Fourth Closet. And yesterday, Scott, with the help of Pinky Pills, created this absolute gem. This is the graphic novel of The Silver Eyes, and I will show you a few pages inside, but just like all the other reviews I've done, I will not be showing every page. It's only fair. They have been working on this for a long time. They've worked very, very hard, as you will see in the select pages that I am going to show you, um, and I feel like it's only fair if I allow you guys to experience the whole book for yourselves. Because it just wouldn't be cool for me to go out here, show you literally every single page, because that just wouldn't be fair to Scott and Pinky Pill, so I'm not gonna do that. I know some people get mad at that fact, but it again, it's only fair. How would you like it if you worked some really hard on something and then someone just kind of exposed it for everyone else. You wouldn't be happy. So that's basically what I'm doing here. In the description, there will be a link to an Amazon page to get this book for yourself, and I highly recommend it. Uh, but right now, let's dive right into the review. So the cover and the back side of the book, which has the description of the book, we've already been over in previous videos talking about the Silver Eyes graphic novel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip past that and I'll link those videos down below if you want to go catch up on that. Before we hop in, I want to make one quick last announcement that I do have the Fazbear's Fright number one book into the pit. I'm going to be reading it and then I'll do my review on it. So expect that review probably January. But finally, let's get into the review on the graphic novel version of the Silver Eyes. So one of my favorite things about graphic novels is that you finally get to see what the characters properly look like instead of having to just use your imagination um, and using the descriptive words that the books give you. For example, here are all of the main cast of characters in the Silver Eyes. Starting from left to right, we've got Charlie, Jessica, Lamar, John, Carlton, Marla, and finally, Jason. And some more characters that we get to see the faces of is Michael and his parents. I should have mentioned this earlier, but please keep in mind that all of these images that you're going to be seeing around this area have been taken in real life with this book with my own phone. So the lighting, as you can see, especially in this one, is not the best. I apologize, but as far as I'm aware, there's no digital copy that I could take pages from just yet. So yeah. Please bear in mind that fact, but anyways, let's continue. So I chose this picture because it shows Michael's mom and dad right about there. You can see that's his dad and that's his mom. My, my finger gets cut off, but that is his mom, trust me. And this happens uh, around the beginning of the book when all the characters meet for the first time in like 10 years, and they are talking about the tragedy of Michael and all the other kids' death, and they bring up the fact that, that his parents have not moved out of Hurricane Utah, and it shows this picture here showing both of them. You can see Michael right up there in a little picture frame. So again, more faces of characters that we haven't seen yet, which again, I always love. Speaking of Michael, we can also see the Golden Freddy suit in this graphic novel. Of course, we all know what Golden Freddy looks like, but it is cool to see him drawn in this art style, which by the way, I absolutely love. I'll go more in depth into my opinion on the art style in uh, later in the video, but I just want to point out that I personally love it. Um, I think Pinky Pills did an amazing job, and let's see, who colored the images? Because I know someone else did. Let's see, uh, Lori Smith, you did, a, you did an amazing job coloring the images as well. I think it really makes the book stick out to other graphic novels, um, because as far as I'm aware, this is the first book that Pinky Pills has actually drawn for, so uh, congratulations, Pinky, if you're watching this. So yeah, again, We'll get more into that a little bit later on, but I personally love it. 
It's also worth noting that the suit that Corton gets stuffed into, spoilers for the Silver Eyes by the way, this, this should have been clear at the start but there will be spoilers, um, is a blue version of Freddy. I don't know if that's like officially canon or if it's just for the Silver Eyes, but there is apparently a blue version of Freddy and you may be thinking, maybe it's Freddy Frost, babe. It's not because he's made out of freaking ice and I don't think ice and spring larks are going to go together nicely. So here is one picture of Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica all together on stage. Again, I personally love the way they look, though I do have a complaint, and that's on Chica's bib. I don't know why the writing is red, because it's not, it's not red, but uh, that is just me being very picky on small details that don't really matter in the end. This page just honestly reminds me of the fact that we still don't have a Showtime and Help Wanted, which is something I'm still waiting for, Scott, so any time now. And because Foxy is not on the main stage, he is in a separate room in Pirate's Cove, which it is interesting to note that Pirate Cove, in at least the graphic novel, is in an entirely separate room with party tables and everything. It's not just kind of awkwardly stuck onto the side of the wall in the dining room. It is its own room. But uh, yeah, here's Foxy. Again, he looks absolutely incredible. Which, by the way, it has been a while since I've read it. I've <laughs> I've read the Twisted Ones and the, and the Fourth Closet more recently than the Silver Eyes, so my memory of the book isn't the best, but this is a very good refresher. And now for who is arguably the main antagonist of the Silver Eyes, he's even the reason why it's called the Silver Eyes in the first place, is the endoskeleton that Charlie remembers in her flashbacks to when she's playing with her toys in her dad's Henry's garage while he's working on the characters. This might be the ears that give me this feel, but it definitely does resemble, at least in my opinion, Endo-02 from FNAF 2 more than Endo-01 from the first game. Again, I think it's those ears that give me that vibe. We also do get a glimpse at what Henry and, I guess, child Charlie look like in this scene. We will see more of Henry later, don't don't worry, this isn't the only time we're going to be talking about him. And oh boy, speaking of an endoskeleton, this right here is the endoskeleton that eventually murdered Henry. Now when I first saw this page, I'm not going to lie, I was very, very confused. Because as you guys may remember, we believe that Baby is the one that killed Henry as shown at the ending of FNAF World. But then I thought about it a little more and I remembered the fact that Scott said that the games and the books aren't necessarily direct links to each other, so I guess in the book version he is killed by the Silver Eyes Endo, and in the games version maybe he's killed by Baby, as confirmed in FNAF World. I don't really know, I guess it makes sense, but it is definitely conflicting evidence, so it is a little bit confusing. But as we can see right down here, this is William in the Spring Bonnie suit, and then this is Henry in the Fredbear suit. It is so, so, so good to finally see what Fredbear and Spring Bonnie look like, aside from only Fredbear's jump scare. Not gonna lie, I did not expect Spring Bonnie to have a red bow tie, but I guess that makes sense because it resembles Bonnie a bit more. Maybe Fazbear Entertainment is just super cheap, and they reuse Spring Bonnie's bow tie for Bonnie. I guess that makes sense, they are a pretty cheap company. And speaking of finally being able to see what things look like, this is the official design of the outside of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. The one, the location from the first game, I should make that clear. Um, and we're gonna get a little bit more into locations, uh, again, a little bit later on in the video. Man, everything is just being saved to the end. Kind of weird how that works, isn't it? Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's got the sign, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, and it also has Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica peeking out from atop the side. No Foxy, which is interesting, but I guess those three are the main three guys on stage, so I guess that makes sense. And this is something I was super excited to see, was Fred Bear's Family Diner. Unfortunately, we only see it when it's all closed down and boarded up, not when it's like fully functioning and has people. We do see the interior of it. We do get to see the sign of it a little bit, um, which is super, super cool, and we also get to see the outside of it. And as confirmed of in the games, it is super, super small when compared to the other locations, especially the uh, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza from the first game. And here is Fred Bear and Spring Bonnie performing on stage. Again, you can see a little bit more of the interior of the pizzeria there, um, but not much to it. I just thought it was interesting to show, show off these guys performing on stage because they just look super cool. 
you know, it's the first time we've properly seen them together on stage performing, and it just, it feels so good. So I wanted to share that photo with you guys. And now this is what I wanted to talk about when I mentioned we're going to talk about more locations later on in the video. This is the mall um, that surrounds the pizzeria, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. If you guys haven't read The Silver Eyes, basically what happened is Fred, not Fred Bears, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, it shut down, and then they built a mall around the pizzeria. Weird that they didn't just tear it down and then build a new mall in its place, they just kind of built the mall around the pizzeria. It's really weird, trust me, but this is what it looks like from the outside. So this picture doesn't really have any meaning. I didn't have to show it off, but people on the Reddit have been criticizing it, so I just wanted to throw it in there. People are mentioning the fact that Bonnie is standing fully up, but then his head is all the way down <laughs> near the floor. So this is the scene when Charlie has a flashback of her and Sammy playing in the closet, and then they get kidnapped by Spring Bonnie. I say they, only one of them got kidnapped. Uh, Charlie says Sammy did but William Afton says that he kidnapped Charlie. It's kind of confusing. I still don't really understand it myself, so I'm not gonna talk about it that much. Look, look at that face though. Tell me that's not terrifying. Another terrifying scene when Carlton gets kidnapped by William Afton. The, just, just terrifying. Like look at the terror in his eyes. It's just, it's really creepy. This book has some really creepy poems. And again, tiny details like this make me so, so, so happy. I don't have a photo of it, um, but in the original Silver Eyes, uh, Charlie explains William Afton before he goes all crazy and starts killing kids, um, as a super, like, large man, and then he becomes skinny over time, and then when they finally see him at the end of the Silver Eyes, he's, like, super skinny, you know, he has all the, um, the scars from the spring locks. So this scene, this flashback to when he gets arrested, and the fact that he's larger than he appears, that's, it makes me so happy. Again, tiny details like that absolutely make or break the book. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. Now he's super skinny, he has the scars from the spring locks. It's just really, really cool to see tiny details like that being converted over to the graphic novel because it makes me so happy. Noticing these small details which don't really add much, but the fact that they're there just makes you super happy. And once you notice these tiny details, it just makes the book a whole lot better. This, this is also super terrifying just seeing him screaming with his scars exposed half out of the spring bonnie suit. This book is terrifying at some points, and it's really good. And now we're finally gonna go back to talking about the mall. As you can see here, uh, I believe this is Officer Clay. Uh, as you can see right here, William Afton's background is the Hurricane Mall construction site, so I can barely read it on my screen, which is interesting because in the updated version of Help Wanted, you can actually find a teaser for the upcoming Steel World game for 2020, and that teaser is a construction site building a mall. It may or may not be this exact mall from the Silver Eyes, but it is interesting to note the fact that William Afton walked at that construction site. Just thought I'd throw that in there for all you theorists out there. Another favorite scene of mine is at the very, very end when Charlie snaps the spring lock in the neck of the spring bonnie suit with William still inside of it, and he bleeds out to death uh, in front of everyone, as you can see down here. A weird, a weird part to have is one of my favorite, the fact that the guy basically dies in front of everyone else, but it is a very, very cool scene. Just, just look at that. Look the way he's holding his head, the blood spewing out. It's just, it's very, very cool to see a guy die. Not in real life, though, just, just in this book. No, that's cool. I also love the way he died. Getting payback for what he was trying to do to Carlton and everyone else. Super, super cool way to die. So that is it. That is all the pages of this book we are going to be looking at. Again, as I said at the start of the video, it's only fair if I show you guys only a select few pages. There is a lot to this book. How many pages... Oh, there exactly, there are 191 pages. The original Silver Eyes has 464 total pages. And the fact that they brought that down to less than half is just absolutely incredible. So what are my honest opinions on this book? I really, really love it. I do, I really love it. As much hate as it's getting because of the art style, Honestly, that makes me love it even more. Pinky has been working with the franchise for a super long time, and the fact that she got to 
illustrate the first ever graphic novel for the book series is honestly just really heartwarming and honestly she did a really really good job in my opinion. Lori Smith you also did a fantastic job coloring all the illustrations. There are a little bit of hiccups here from the illustrations and the colors of course but it's only human. It was made by humans who all do errors but overall this is a really good graphic novel. I would highly recommend it for people um, that like FNAF and that liked The Silver Eyes. I honestly don't see anyone outside of that range getting this book because you're not really going to understand it, you're not going to get many of the references, so I do think this is really only for FNAF fans, but that just makes it even better. It's like our little baby in the FNAF community. I never do ratings, I don't know why, I just don't like rating things, but this definitely gets a major plus from me. Definitely go out and buy it, again, link in the description to an Amazon page that you can go and get it. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, hopefully you guys enjoy the book if you do get it, and I just want to thank you all so much for watching this review. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye!